Hey there viewers and welcome back to the self made channel 2012 it's a Toyota it's a Tundra it's got the big 5.7 it's not mine uh, but it's broke because Scotty lies these things do break uh, money lights on ABS four-wheel drive lows flashing traction control I still can't speak <laughs> let's check it out I did look at it the other day and it had codes for a speed sensor a lot of S's in these words. So I, I didn't look at any further than that. I test drove it. I see the speed sensor was not working in the data. So we have to have a look and see what's wrong. Bad computer, broken wire, bad sensor, bad connector. I don't know. I do know in my head I speak perfectly clear though. <laughs> so I scanned it. Let's go to the report. Let's get one of our new styluses. Why does everything have to have an S in it? Okay, so output, speed sensor, no signal, PO722. Okay, ABS is on because the ECM has a code in it. Four wheel drive, light is flashing because ABS has a code in it. You can't talk to the uh, four wheel drive modules on these older Toyotas. I can barely talk myself. Okay, enough about talking. 722. I'm gonna try to pull this out of memory here. We're gonna go in and I think it said N, like November, T, like Tango, and the number one. Uh, it was a speed sensor, speed signal. Let's see here. Uh, Indian speed, vehicle speed. Uh, yeah, it was this speed signal here. So speed NT and SP2. One of, the, one of these wasn't working. Um, I don't remember which one exactly, but <clears throat> let's pull up service data and see what the 722 refers to. <laughs> ah, stick with it, folks, okay? Um, but one of, one of these wasn't working, if I remember correctly. I took it on a test drive, and that's as far as I went with it, and uh, told the guy he's gonna need to make an appointment so we can figure out what's going on. So anyway, here we are. All right, according uh, to service data, the SP2, so this is the speed sensor, uh, detects the rotational speed of the transmission output shaft and sends a signal to ECM. ECM determines uh, vehicle speed based on uh, these signals or an AC generator. Uh, parking gear mounted, planetary gear set rotates, uh, and this voltage is sent to ECM. Parking gear, okay. Uh, so basically, it should be just a two-wire speed sensor. Gives the code check criteria. Um, you know, loss of signal, so we could be dealing with open circuit, bad computer, uh, actual physical broken uh, uh, reductor wheel inside your transmission. Uh, they show us how to use our scope, how to set it up. Um, Take a look here. Okay, there's a wiring diagram. Uh, so SP2, SP2 plus, minus, and the ECM, those are the pin numbers. No wire colors, unfortunately. Um, <clears throat> because this has two sensors, an input and an output. Uh, let's see, well, so it give us anything useful. Not to torque it down, have it tweaked. Oh, okay, we have a, re a resistance spec for it 560 to 680 ohms all right let's go underneath it and see if we can just find this thing let's just do a visual inspection and see if we can find the speed sensor okay i see one it must be the input way let's see enhance enhance focus baby focus yeah, it's not gonna focus, but there's one way up here, way up there ahead of my light that you can't see. So that means there's gotta be one. Oh, there's another one. Right underneath that shift. Oh, okay, you guys can see it pretty clear right there. That little fella. That's the other one. Um, I don't see it tweaked out or anything. Uh, let's check the resistance of it and see what we see. 
Let's unplug it. Okay. Let's unplug. Let me get another light so I can check that connector. We just want to make sure it doesn't have the case of the New York's salt and crust. Now, connectors are nice and clean. Um, so that's good. I know it's difficult for you guys to see where you're at, but I have to be kind of here in the optimal viewing area. Uh, actually, let me switch spots with you. I'm gonna see if we can sneak some probes up here. Front probe by this little fella. There. And there, and we're looking for five, I want to say 550 to 600 ohms. Make sure our meter's good. We're at zero zeros there. Let's probe into here. See what it says. And it says 0 0.570 kiliohms. So that is 570 ohms. Oh, oh, that's good. Technically, <laughs> I assume it's not. Maybe we're on the wrong sensor. I expected half expect that sucker to be bad. Let's just check this speed sensor up here. I think this would be an input, right? Connector looks clean. Let me probe this front speed sensor just to make a darn root and tootin' that we're on the right, right one here and I'm not being dumb. Let's probe on to that peg right there. And, well, we have to be a little rude here, step right in front of you. Probably that peg right there. Okay, let's check this speed sensor. <clears throat> Get our meter over here. Stand by. See what these wires have to tell us. Point five eight zero kilo ohms. So that one also resistance value checks fine. So. With that being said, at this point, we must approach this differently. I'll plug this back in. I can get her in there. There's that one. Kind of get a little visual inspection on the harness here. Everything looks like it's in its clips up through there. I assume it's this rear output. Well, let's uh, let's do this. I got an idea. What's up, Miss Zell? Wow, got this some, is really nice. <laughs> you know, orange. Yeah. Hmm. All right. <laughs> That's about all I can muster up. So here's what we're doing, folks. We got the scope hanging under here. I left both sensors unplugged. And I've got it just probed into it. We're gonna start it up, drop it in drive, and see what we see. So the red uh, trace, uh, we've got it uh, five volts on the screen. And um, what was I gonna tell you? Uh, 200 milliseconds cross screen. The red one is the rear, the blue one is the front speed signal. So let's uh, see if we can't reach in and fire it up here. I've already left it in neutral. Speedo's working. <laughs> That's funny. No lights on the dash right now. Everything's unplugged. Wheels are turning. Whoa. Got some higher voltage here. Set them both on the same scale. Clearly, there's a difference. 
Yes, sir. So we can see the amplitude. They're both the same sensor, so they should be working the same. But you can clearly see the amplitude of our front sensor, our input, is going to, um, I don't know, I get cursors here. Let's see. That one is at, what's that say? By, uh, position one, 5.5 volts, okay? I don't know how we get our red cursor up. I don't use this scope hardly ever. Uh, I don't know. Anyways, we can see the amplitude is much higher than that of the red trace when both channels are set up exactly the same. So, uh, pretty interesting that it tested okay, you know, resistance wise. I think I know how to do it. We'll click red. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so let's see what's our, our peak to peak here. 2.3 volts so we have a delta of 5 volts on that signal and then when we go to the blue trace our delta is 10 volts so it's almost it's twice the amplitude I think we just have a bad sensor uh, despite the fact that resistance wise it tested okay so let's shut it off um, I do have a sensor here for it which is great and then we'll just run the same test again so I bought a lot of stuff, not knowing what was wrong with I got a center, a terminal, and uh, some wire leads. Let's slip this open so we can take this bad boy out. They're an Azen center. The other thing, I guess the trigger that runs the center could be wonky or misaligned in there. We can take a look. Let's test out at 500. 92 ohms, 0.592 kilo ohms. The new one, it tests out at 597 ohms, 0 0.597, 0 0.598 kilo ohms. So they test the same in that regard. I'm gonna have a look in the hole where I pulled this fella out of and see if anything looks wonky in there. It wasn't a lot of corrosion under it, but it clearly is not putting out near the amplitude is the, is the front signal. The more I think about this, the more I think I'm wrong. Uh, I think that sensor's possibly good. The front sensor is gonna have a higher speed or higher amplitude and higher voltage, higher amplitude, higher frequency, because it's an input. I think we're gonna see the same thing here. I did put the new sensor in, but I'm not, I'm not thinking here. Uh, I think I'm wrong. The output amplitude and frequency is going to be based on how fast that rear wheel's going. We just got in drive at an idle. Let's have a look anyways. So, so that is right. I'm an idiot. It's because if we go step on the throttle, this will increase significantly. Let's put a bunch of time on the screen. Let's go give it some beans. Let's reach in here and give her a little pedal push. Now we should go out and see an increase in amplitude. So anyways, got ahead of myself a little bit. Yep. This guy's an idiot. So, yeah. We can zoom in on it. And hit. But, yep. So that's my fault. Sorry about that, folks. Missed the idea. I, I should have known, uh, so that's kind of my own fault. Didn't mean to lead you guys astray. Um, I should have known when a peak to peak voltage was, you know, two and a half that at an idle and that output only going, you know, five miles an hour. It was in my head, it was working differently, but that's all right. We all make mistakes. Uh, we're going to keep proceeding. We're going to turn the key on. I'm going to clear the codes, got them plugged in. We're going to look to make sure it's still broke. And if it is, now we need to find out, it, is the signal making it to the PCM or is there a broken wire? Everything is plugged in. I'm gonna start it up, drop it and drive and see if we have our signals back. Hopefully we don't. This, um, this should be the one missing, this SP2. Of a hoo -hoo. So that's pretty 
pretty darn interesting. What in the thunder? Try this. I took the new one out. <laughs> Sucked the old one back in. Although it seemed to look the same on the scope without really scrutinizing it. Let's fire it back up here. Well, um, this very well may have been a connection issue at the connector. Um, I know I didn't show you guys test driving this uh, the other day when this was at zero the whole time. You have to trust me on that. I think the wise thing to do here, uh, because we didn't really disturb the harness where it goes up around the transmission, it's held down very well there. The only thing we've touched are these connectors. I would have to believe at that point it's a connection problem. Um, I'm going to scrutinize these connectors good and give them a little tug just to be sure. Sensor is pretty cheap. I might put it back in there and, uh, huh, it's frustrating. So well, there it is. You can see the harness right here. You know, we obviously didn't disturb it because it's, you know, zip tied right there. We had that connection unplugged. The only other thing I can think of, and, and these wires are good, I gave them a good tug, is that the other day when the customer uh, stopped in with it to set up an appointment, when I took it on a drive, it was hot. You know, it was fully warmed up. So maybe, you know, is this sensor failing when it gets hot? Because it certainly appears to be working right now. So this is a little interesting. Um, <laughs> interesting, listen to this guy. <laughs> just sitting here, it's not clamped in here, it's just resting on the vise. And I hooked the meter to it, and now it's at 612 ohms. You know, it's not our connectors either. I was gonna sit here and heat it up slightly with a heat gun. Just to see if the value goes way out of spec or anything funky. Uh, my little butane torch is missing. Oh, it's at home. That's right. So we'll go like this. We'll use this little butane torch. We'll just see if it changes at all just by giving it a little bit of heat here. I mean, the value should change. Oh, look at that. It's done. And it's not even, it's not, it's cold to the touch. You guys see the meter flying all over the place here? Open circuit in, boom. Jeez, gosh, I was feeling like an idiot. There it is, yep, so it's completely open circuited right now. And, and it's cold to the touch. I mean, it's, it can't be 80 degrees Fahrenheit. I'll have to prove it to you if you guys have trust issues with me. I don't know, I had a temperature gun. Oh, here it is, here it is. I had a different one, the other one's missing. I'm guessing 82. Well, 76 was the max, so it's not even not even warm. Quite interesting. And yes, I'm probed into it. Okay, good. At least we don't feel like a bunch of ding dongs. Wonder if we can run it under cold water and get it to work again. The sad part is. We could have left that thing going for probably another minute. We would have watched it quit while we had our test equipment hooked to it. But we didn't. Oh, that's poor little Luna. Poor little kitty who wrinkled that grin. Come here, kitty, kitty. Are you cold outside? Right, come here. Come here, you baby. You want to go inside? Huh? Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Basically, just rescued a cat. We're pretty much cat rescuers. Okay, let's go for a drive. We got a bunch of dead Chevys out here. 
Chevy, 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 Toyota, don't run. Apparently that thing's been in the dealer like three times and they can't get it fixed. Keeps leaving the guy stranded, supposedly. Okay, all of our lights are off. Before the low light was flashing, ABS, traction, all that. Looks like that's working now. Of course, we've seen the sensor quit, so at least we can sleep good tonight. I know that much. Man, I forgot how annoying those things were. I shut that off in my truck. <laughs> that's the beauty of Toyota. You can disable the seatbelt reminder. Before it is now. I still can't talk. It's gonna get better, folks. Yeah, let's go see what Andy's up to. Making a video. Oh no! Am I doing it wrong? Probably. Where's your, where's your, I told these people you got a fifth wheel on here. I like to take back off the main entrance. Oh, well you painted it wrong, I'll tell you that much. Oh, well that thing in the table. What's this? I saw it, that's just a little bit up. <laughs> yeah, Two by four here, we're working well, You should hear my TV voice now. <laughs> this wheel's over there. I can put it back on real quick, but we'll see it. No, we'll stop in and check progress. All right. Yep, there's people trying to take me out of business and put that thing in. Used to be a customer of mine, not anymore. This is further south. It's in his Peterbilt. Oh, let's see this. Got the kind of junk we're working with here. I got this camera at 10 pounds. It don't take 10 pounds off. Okay. Got the U.S. General over here, huh? Yeah, oh yeah, the Harbor Freight Special. They're good boxes. I'm happy with that. Yep. I mean, what I do, I'm no pro. Well, tell us what you're doing here. Okay, the dump truck. Well, you gotta tell us what it is for you. Gotta be like, oh, 387 oh, long hood. It's a 388 Peterbilt. Oh, 388 Peterbilt. 13 to 7,000 pounds. That's like 388. Nice. It's got the chubby rubber. It's, it's, got, got, the, the, <laughs> it's got the. It's got the leather. It's got the dual exhaust. Well, it's got the fine. Well, it's got the fake leather. Ish. Wow. So, I mean, uh, so tell us what you did here. What's the big plan? Well, it's a dump truck. Wait a minute, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. What? What are you doing with that shirt? Uh, Using that for a rag? Listen, I got too fat for it. <laughs> Did you really? <laughs> I gave you a different one. I'm gonna need a double XL. Uh, okay. Just to replace that. But uh, anyways, go ahead. It used to be Did a, you already see the dump box outside in the driveway? You glanced at it. I didn't want to go at it. invading okay. on your privacy too much while I'm doing this. A few years ago I made this dump truck, and now I want to make it so I can switch back and forth between a dump truck with a dump body on it and a fifth wheel plate over there. So you'll be so, able to take the dump box on and off, put yeah. your fifth plate on and off. Yeah, haul some trailers when I need to, do some dump truck graveling when I need to. You know, it's wow. the quick back and forth. Quick. How quick do you think you'll be able to take your fifth plate on and off? Um, well, I'm building a little tool to pick it up with and stuff like that there, and I got all these quick necks going in, and uh, I'm gonna say two hours. Oh, okay. That's for the YouTubers. It's probably four. Oh, okay. Six. Probably 20 minutes, really, 20 when minutes, you think about yeah. it. Yeah, back or in your slap around I go. But realistically, I, if, if everything goes according to plan, according to plan, it'd be a couple hours. Yeah, I got the big, got the big quick connects in here. I got the, that's for your cameras. Big tarp wires. Oh, that's for your tarper. Yeah, I got the lights are down in here. That was already Peterbilt. I, I, I stayed kept that factory. Oh, yeah. Wow. So, I don't know. How come you're, uh, yeah, you got shut off. I'm gonna, I'm trying to speak over it. La, 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 la. We don't want to uh, de demonetize. Nope, nope, we catch you in we're off. We got the weather pack connectors. Wow. We don't do anything with butt connectors around here. I got one of these kits myself. I just restocked it. I never used it though. 
No? You should tell me Astro makes it. Oh, you got an Astro bow nozzle? I do got an Astro bow nozzle. Yeah, Astro, Astro makes one of these kits. I have one. Are they the? Are they genuine or are they? Do yeah, no, they're, they're the real deal. I'll show it to you. Okay. Got the big bolts, waiting for some more to come in the mail. Flange nuts oh, okay. in there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, the airline fittings, get the pass-throughs, and head go down to... Wow, you got Mac tools there? Head go down to your mother's, or brother's place, your brother's place. Get that stuff. Yeah, I got Mac tools. Wow. Only How come, uh, what's going on with the tire wear here on this axle? This is my spare tire I had put on, I had a blowout. Oh, okay. It had, uh, had some old tires on it. Uh, Jeepers, they were original to the truck, 2013, so they were, they were nine years old. Got ya. Well, I got brand new tires out there to put on the drives. I got, I'm gonna be all set up. We got the fenders to go on here, the minimizers. They're gonna go on each axle, you know, like the pros do it. And then you have to take them off when you put your dump body on or you leave them on? Um, this one will have to come off because it'll be too tall for the arms. I, I used the two post lift to pick it up when I took it off the dump body. Oh, right, so, actually uh, you told me that. So the arms got to swing in there. I had to let this down to get the arm in underneath the box. So that fender will have to come off, but these are probably stand there. Got yeah, yeah. Got the ones with the lights in the back. It's gonna be. It's gonna be sick. Oh yeah. You gonna have that girl come polish all the chrome this year? Maybe. She's probably gonna touch it up a little bit. Boy. And you don't even have it deleted. She, yeah, well, she's New York compliant. Probably look at the look at what the death does to the thing here. Oh, you get it, like a residual drip out of the exhaust. Well, it gets mixed in with that condensation or whatever. You get like a, rip, a residue in there, and then it drips out the. Oh man. It's tough on things. Yeah, it screws up your chrome. Yeah, it's no good. Huh. Delete it. Yeah. Uh, we're going to talk about that off camera. <laughs> did you, did you, <laughs> oh, what happened to your clear coat, man? Oh, yeah, that too. I got to get that fixed. Isn't that something? I think because this truck went at, at, sold at an auction, I think they did the quick clear coat oh, on the shop. The old fluffing stuff. Yeah, right? so I was washing it this fall, and all of a sudden a big piece just went floop. Uh -oh. It was gone. So. And then you I got another local guy who can help me fix that up. You smoke your deer with it, right? Not being funny or anything, but you know who he is. Well, I know who he is. You're <laughs> not being funny. <laughs> yeah, I did smoke deer with it. This is all fixed now, man. Yeah, I got her tuned up, put the old grill back on, huck bolt everything back in place. Wow. Just like the boat factory. You got clear coat peeling over here, too. Yeah, and there's some man. on the roof. Man, it's like a Chevrolet. <laughs> it sat outside down in Oklahoma. I think it got some pretty intense sunlight. Yeah. I'm at home. It's down on top of the mountain, so it's closer to the sun or something like that. I'm not sure how that works. The quick disconnect. Man, I don't miss working on these things. I mean, this one's pretty nice. I'd probably come help you. So, yeah, I get a little spoiled because there's no Ross. You got to start your own YouTube channel, I'm telling you. <laughs> I've told you this before. People would have loved to see you build this whole truck. Yeah, well, I had it all tore apart when, when I first got it. The first thing I did was cut all the suspension off. But all it was was a cab and a pair of frame, frame, frame rails coming out yeah. the back. And I moved it all to where I wanted it to be and put it back together. Bam. You know. That could have made a two or three part video series right there. Uh, frame stretching. Frame stretching with Andy. So, all right, Andy. I guess that's all we wanted. Wanted okay. to see what you're doing. We'll check in in progress later on. Yeah, well, don't worry. I, I like to see you fix that. Why you keep that? coming back to all my... In, Showing in, all your flaws. Perfect. What people do on YouTube, they'll pick it apart. they do? Mm -hmm. Hold on, let me get the torch and the welder out. <laughs> That's a uh, comment generator. <laughs> plasma cutter. I don't even have one of You want to see. You want to take that with you and show them how it works? Nope. We actually want to see you riding that dirt bike around. That is not my size. No. <laughs> You're not showing everybody what I got in here. I'm not going to get wrapped now, am I? You will. <laughs> I'm just seeing what I want. <laughs> if it's going to be the locals. Then I didn't show them how to get in the building, though. So. Oh, that's good. All right. Yep. We, we got to go. Thanks for stopping by. Mm -hmm. Well, that's it, folks. I think we're done. The old uh, tire here. It's, come on, turn it off. Uh, works pretty good. Uh, we got to stop and see Andy. We're still working on our speech without spitting everywhere. <laughs> it's going to get better, folks. At least I hope. It'll get better, you're gonna get used to it. And one thing I'll never get used to is when you guys don't go into that comment section. So make sure you do that. Comment section, question, comments, concerns, suffering, fuck your cash. <laughs> Just remember viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. <laughs> Thanks for watching. <laughs>